Hello everyone and welcome to Suburban Stone Age. Today's video is about the new snail farm I'm trying out. Lately I've been obsessed with the idea of micro meats. And what I mean by that are instead of super intensive um, meats like beef that take a lot of water, a lot of space, a lot of land, what about utilizing old sources of food that actually are in the environment right now anyway, such as snails. These guys I intend to utilize as a protein source for my chickens and my emus coming next year. So while it's still spring, I wanted to, um, you know, just understand their life cycle, get to know them a little better and start a little farm and see if we can have success through the summer, which will be our most challenging season for these guys. So my setup's gonna look like this. I got this giant terracotta pot at the thrift store. It was about 35 bucks. It was a really good deal. It's used, of course, but that's okay. I put a rock in the bottom to plug the hole and then put some just clay from our backyard that was um, sifted through a classifier in about a four inch layer in the bottom. Then to get the humidity up, I sprayed it down with water. And now I'm going to add a few uh, rocks, some branches, and some fresh vegetation. And then I'm going to put all those snails inside their new home. Just kind of building up the moisture here a little bit by spraying down the sides and the soil. Just kind of gently and evenly. Um, as you know, snails like a lot of moisture. So that's something we're going to have to really... Um, Keep in mind, because we're almost done with the rainy season and we're not gonna see any more rain most likely till the fall. So keeping these guys moist through the hot summer is gonna be important. And that's why this terracotta pot here is gonna be a, a pretty good enclosure, I think, to help retain moisture and um, humidity. And then I'm gonna put them in a very shady side of the house um, on the north side of the yard in the shade most of the time. So I've put some lace rock from an old aquarium in there, a big round rock that should stay nice and even temperature and keep the soil underneath cool and moist so they can find that little microhabitat if they want. And then some branches so they have more use of the vertical space. And I'm also gonna throw this old rib bone in here that was something the dogs have been chewing on. They used to, they've abandoned it, but this will be a little source of calcium for them to scrape on if they want. Next, I'm gonna use some of these collard greens from the garden. Snails love collard greens. They love all kinds of really like nitrogenous, deep leafy greens. We've got that a lot this year. We grow our own vegetables. So this is, um, this is, ugh, Roxy just eats them too. So it's food for the dogs and the chickens and now the snails. So it's a workhorse vegetable, I like it. We also have a ton of clover this year in the lawn. I've been seeding clover very heavily because it's pretty drought tolerant and stays green in the summer. So I'm gonna grab this. Um, the chickens love it. We could eat it too if we needed to. In fact, I'll probably, that'll be another video is giving clover salad a try. But for now, I'm just gonna cut some and it's also gonna be snail feed. Now it's time to move these snails. It rained last night and it's late April and that's pretty late in the rainy season for us. So <laughs> I dashed out while I could and I collected so many snails in 10 or 15 minutes. I, I probably had a hundred, no joke. I'm actually gonna take a minute and count them, but uh, I gathered this like whole bucket full and they've been in here just for the day, but I'm gonna transfer them into a better home, into the farm and um, we'll see how they like it. Okay, so I counted 65 snails, plus I probably have, I don't know, 10 or maybe less in my other little test test tank over here. So a um, little less than 100, so let's say 75, but not bad for 15 minutes worth of work on a rainy night. It was amazing how many snails were out there and how many I passed up. It was hundreds, too many for me to pick up. So I hope to make good use of this uh, newfound resource. All right, and there you have it. It's the 
snail farm and I ended up tying it off with just some scrap shade cloth I had, some old baling twine from straw bales. I did buy that furniture dolly so that I can push this thing around. Um, but I already had the pot and everything else and the snails of course were free. So this is very inexpensive and hopefully a way for me to take advantage of protein. So uh, next steps are to, I'm gonna leave them here next to me so that I um, get in the habit of tending to them every day. And then I will probably put uh, little pots of soil in there to collect eggs. Also, um, especially when the hot weather comes, I'll probably build a wooden lid over the top to keep um, temperatures even and, and moisture even. And hopefully it'll be snug enough to keep ants out, which are a concern. So there you have it. Uh, I'll keep you posted on how the snail farm goes, but uh, basically it's just free protein and I'm excited to make use of it. Oh, and by the way, the, the shells are calcium, which I'm gonna be using in quicklime projects. And also it'll be calcium for the chickens and the emus. Great. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Um, this was fun, and I hope you're excited like I am. And stay tuned. Subscribe for more updates. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye.